Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India strives for win-win situation for all, says Defence Minister at Indo-Pacific Dialogue. US Envoy says Taliban becoming more defined, embracing policies of past. And early election trends show hung parliament likely in Nepal. And now for all the details. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Friday said that India stands for a free, open and rules-based Indo-Pacific. Addressing the Indo-Pacific Regional Dialogue in New Delhi, Singh espoused the idea of multi-alignment and a win-win situation for all. Espousing the idea of multi-alignment and a win-win situation for all, India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Friday said that India stands for a free, open and rules-based Indo-Pacific for the economic development of the wider global community. Addressing the Indo-Pacific Regional Dialogue 2022 in New Delhi, Singh said, We believe in a multi-aligned policy which is realised through diverse engagements with multiple stakeholders. He argued, that a strong and prosperous India would not be built at the cost of others. Rather, India is there to help other nations realize their full potential. We should try to create a win-win situation for all. And we should not be guided by narrow self-interest, which is not beneficial in the long run, but by enlightened self-interest, which is sustainable and resilient to shocks. The Indo-Pacific Regional Dialogue is an annual apex-level international outreach of the Indian Navy to promote deliberations on maritime issues relevant to the Indo-Pacific. It witnessed active participation from senior officials of the armed forces and industry and diplomatic representatives. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday paid tributes to Assam's celebrated warrior Lachit Bhorpukan on his 400th birth anniversary and said the leader epitomized unparalleled courage. PM Modi said India has broken the shackles of colonialism and is moving forward celebrating its heritage and remembering its heroes with pride. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday paid tributes to Lachit Borfukan, the 17th century general of Ahom Kingdom who defeated the Mughals, as he took part in celebrations of the 400th birth anniversary of the Assamese warrior in New Delhi. PM Modi remembered the heroism of Borfukan and recalled how he had kept national interest above blood relations and did not even hesitate to punish his close relative. The PM said that India's history was distorted deliberately, but now it has broken the shackles of colonialism and is moving forward, celebrating its heritage and remembering its heroes with pride. Lachit Borfukan's birth anniversary is celebrated in Assam every year as Lachit Divas. Borfukan has always been revered as a legendary warrior in military history and he is a crucial part of the Assamese identity. India's National Defence Academy in his honour awards gold medal to its best cadet every year. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's climate minister Sheri Rehman has accused the opposition PTI party of trying to interfere in the process of appointing the new military command. She criticized the PTI leadership for calling President Alvi for a meeting before he approved the appointment of the new Army Chief General Asim Munir. 
Pakistan's climate minister and senior PPP leader Sherry Rahman on Friday lashed out at the opposition PTI party for trying to interfere in the process of appointment of the new military command. This comes as a day earlier, General Asim Munir was appointed as the country's new army chief by Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif, while General Sahir Shamshad Mirza was appointed as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Committee. A summary of the same was later sent to President Arif Alvi for approval. Speaking during a parliament session, Rahman slammed the PTI leadership and said they have even made the president controversial as the party called the president to Lahore to give the impression that it is still relevant. जो एक हस्तास अपॉइंटमेंट में मदाखलत चासी मदाखलत करने की कोशिश कर रहे थे, जो अब भी इस वक्त लॉन्ग मार्च लेकर अपना कंटेनर लेके इस्लामाबाद की तरफ बढ़ने हैं, उनको कोई ख्याल है लोगों की तकालीफ का, उनको कोई ख्याल है कि आधे मुल्क में क्या सूरत हाल है या एक तिहाई मुल्क जब डूबा था, उससे लो Rahman also hit out PTI for holding an anti-government long march rally amid testing times when Pakistan is recovering from massive flooding. Meanwhile, PTI party chief and former PM Imran Khan on Friday urged his supporters to join the long march in Rawalpindi on Saturday, adding that he will also come out for the nation despite injuries in an assassination attempt. Khan has held several rallies demanding snap elections since his ouster in April, but the ruling coalition has rejected, saying that the polls will be held next year as per the schedule. More on news from Pakistan. Locals in Pakistan's Karachi city have lamented that several hours of gas load shedding has made their lives miserable amid the winter season. The unannounced load shedding began before the government announced planned shedding in December. With the onset of winters, Pakistan's business capital Karachi is witnessing unannounced and prolonged load shedding in gas supply, affecting the day-to-day -day lives of residents. During the peak hours, almost every locality is witnessing no supply or very low pressure in supply line. Adding to the woes when the consumer dials complaint service number, they are told utility service has no information about load shedding, which has further triggered unrest. This shortage comes after gas supply to industries was suspended following a government notification to prioritize domestic and commercial consumers. Though the Pakistan government had announced 16-hour load shedding in December, the main supplier, Sui Southern Gas Company, has started the cut in supply much ahead of the schedule. अभी तो ठंड का सिस्टम शुरू नहीं हुआ है। उससे पहले ही इन्होंने गैस का जो है लोड शेडिंग कर दिया और पूरे कराची आप ये देख लीजिए कि लोग होटलों की लाइन में लगे हुए हैं खानों के लिए। लोग परेशान हैं पहले ही जो है इस वक्त गैस तो अपनी जगह पर नया है। वे के इलेक्ट्रिक मैं कह रहा हूं सर्दियों के अंदर भी जो है के इलेक्ट्रिक के मामला देखने को मिल रहे हैं कि अक्सर जगहों पे जो है लाइट का जो है बहराने है लोकल मीडिया रिपोर्ट्स क्लेम इवन दो सिंध प्रोविंस इज द प्रोड्यूसर ऑफ गैस सप्लायर्स आर प्रोवाइडिंग लेस देन 900 मिलियन क्यूबिक फीट पर डे टू द प्रोविंस द शॉर्टेज इज बिलीव टू इंटेंसिफाई एंड रीच इट्स पीक इन विंटर अमिड द ऑनगोइंग गैस क्राइसिस मूविंग ऑन U.S. Special Envoy Reena Amiri has said the Taliban is becoming more defiant in embracing the policies of the past, condemning the reports of public flogging in parts of Afghanistan amid the growing concern over the human rights situation. She added it did not end up well before and it will once again take the country on a perilous path. U.S. Special Envoy Reena Amiri has condemned the reports of public flogging in the eastern Logar province of Afghanistan amid the growing concern over the human rights situation. Taking to Twitter, Amiri said that this is both appalling and a dangerous sign that the Taliban are becoming more defiant in showing the world that they are embracing the policies of the past and taking the country on a perilous path. The Taliban-led Supreme Court on Wednesday confirmed that 14 people, including three women, were lashed for different sins including adultery, robbery and other forms of corruption. It was the second confirmation of lashings by the Taliban this month, signalling a possible return to practices common in its hardline rule in the 1990s. The Taliban took over Afghanistan in August 2021 and have imposed policies severely restricting basic rights, particularly those of women and girls. The Taliban have dismissed all women from leadership posts in the civil service and prohibited girls from attending secondary school. Taliban decrees prohibit women from traveling unless accompanied by a male relative 
and require women's faces to be covered in public, including women TV newscasters. No country has so far recognized the Taliban's regime in Afghanistan. The country's assets have remained frozen due to sanctions that have severely hampered banking, business and development, leading to greater insecurity, poverty and isolation. The latest trends of vote count have indicated another hung parliament in Nepal. Though the trends suggest a simple majority to Nepali Congress and Mayo's centre-led five-party ruling alliance, if deals go haywire, no two major parties will be able to form a government. As per the latest vote count trend, Nepal is once again headed towards a hung parliament. Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Diobas Nepali Congress has been on the lead with victories in 41 constituencies, while opposition CPN UML, led by KP Sharma Oli, is following second with 30 seats. Pushpikamal Dehel led Maoist center is currently on the third spot. While Prime Minister Deoba in multiple forums before elections had stated that Communist Democratic Alliance of Nepali Congress and Maoist center would go for at least 15 years, CPN UML's only held conversation with his former alliance partner Dehel for forming government, Dehel's office confirmed. On the same day, Dehel also held a telephonic conversation with Duba, who needs communist support to retain the government. But with trends showing no two parties being able to form a government, smaller parties like Rashtriya Swatantra Party can emerge as solution for them, resulting in a new alliance. While there is no clear picture for alliance, aspirations are on rise for the top post. About 61% of roughly 18 million Nepalis voted in Sunday's elections for the 275-member parliament, final results of which are expected latest by early December. Nepal, a natural buffer between Asian giants, India and China, has changed governments 10 times since its 239-year-old monarchy was abolished in 2008. That instability has fueled corruption, hampering economic growth and slowed recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. More than 3,000 couples from Hindu, Muslim, Sikh and Buddhist communities exchanged marital vows at a mass wedding event in India's Khazibad city on Thursday. Mass weddings are increasingly becoming popular, especially among the economically weaker sections of the Indian society, as they reduce worries of monetary implications among parents. In a bid to provide girls belonging to the economically weaker sections an opportunity to get married in a proper ceremony, a mass wedding ceremony was held for more than 3,000 couples in India's northern Ghaziabad city on Thursday. Around 1,850 Hindu, 1,147 Muslim and three Buddhist and Sikh couples dressed as per their culture and exchanged vows at the wedding ceremony organized by the Uttar Pradesh state government. The couples were given 75,000 rupees or nearly 918 US dollars as gift. 3,003 Jode Hindu, Muslim, Sikh or Bodh ये चार वर्गों के हैं एक बहुत बड़ी चीज है मुझे बहुत खुशी हो रही है मैं शादी की आज और ये सरकार का बहुत ही अच्छा फैसला है जो भी मतलब कर नहीं सकते गरीब लोग वो उसमें अपना अच्छे से सब काम हो जाना शादी अच्छे से Mass weddings are very popular, especially among the economically backward sections of the Indian society, as these reduce the worries of financial implications among the parents or guardians of the brides. Conventionally, the family of a bride in India is expected to bear the expenses of a lavish wedding and also give dowry to the groom, deemed as gifts to the bride which could be in cash or kind. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.